Okay, so I wanted to start off today uh, with an exercise. Um, uh, you know, we, we've, we've talked a lot about um, disasters as problems, and they obviously are problems, and they're, they're serious challenges. Um, but, um, it, you know, I think sometimes we get the impression that we're completely powerless, and we're not. And so one example of this is we're beginning to understand our risks better, right? We're beginning to understand the potential vulnerability of, of community A or property B or whatever. So I want to look at that today. So I want to do another um, look, at least, at least to see. So here's a question. So um, we have more tools at our display or at our disposal. Um, do we make those tools available to folks and are folks really internalizing those yet? So to do this, um, I was out uh, hiking uh, this weekend out in, um, uh, I thought, oh, I'll go, with the rain, I'm all gonna go see a, a waterfall with my family. And apparently all of LA County decided the same exact thing. Like, that's a great thing. We should all go to the same trailhead. Um, and so, uh, so it was a good hike, uh, a little bit slow. Um, and then afterwards went and got some seafood in Malibu and there were some of these magazines sitting around. I'm like, what? This is interesting. So, so I grabbed some of these magazines. So this is what we're gonna do um, uh, for today. Um, so let's see all of these crazy expensive uh, homes. Are these folks perceiving risk? Or are these homes uh, you know, potentially um, uh, vulnerable to uh, an oncoming disaster or not, okay? So I went and I grabbed a bunch of these uh, free magazine things that, that sit around in all these places. And um, I, I, I took photos, and so these are all uploaded for you guys to, to um, look at. And so um, in this shared file, you'll see in a second, um, uh, they're, they're numbered. It's, it's, you know, number one, number two, number three. And in some cases, it's an ad, so it's one location of a place, and, and and it's just one thing. In other cases like this one, there might be a couple different examples on one sheet. So this would be, you know, there'd be three different homes uh, on this particular uh, ad. And so in this case, if we look, look this up, it says, hey, so th these, this, these are in the Santa Monica Mountains. So this one is on, uh, this is 4250 Decker, this is 4330 Decker Canyon, and um, uh, this one is 4200 um, uh, Decker. And so, um, so we have the address. So in the ad is the address. So we can locate the specific property. And it has either what the sale price is or what people are asking for this, right? And you might think that these insanely crazy expensive houses, right, more expensive than I would ever be able to afford, probably more expensive than any of us would be able to afford. Um, are these folks, obviously, you wouldn't spend, right, $2 million, $5 million, $20 million, all these insane amounts of money, if there was risk, right? You would think that, hey, if I'm gonna blow that much money, I'm gonna pick a place that is, that is protected or, or, is, or is not vulnerable to you pick it. Okay, so, so everybody's been assigned uh, six different properties and we'll go through those and we'll, again, create a, a shared, um, a shared uh, uh, data set. And so what we'll do this is with risk factor. So risk, uh, so uh, First Street. So we've talked a little bit about First Street in the past, uh, in especially, so they really got going in the context of flooding, which is, we're still talking about flooding now. Um, but, uh, uh, but I wanted to show you guys what, what risk factor is. So risk, risk, risk factor has gotten, uh, or First Street, excuse me, has gotten more sophisticated. Okay, so this is um, risk factor which is a tool from First Street. And First Street um, is a, uh, I thought originally it was a nonprofit, now it's a public benefit corporation, right, which is a for-profit company, but that has specifically in their mission um, a, a, social, a social good is what they're trying to achieve as they're also making some money, right? And so what these folks have done is these folks have, have understood that we need clearer understanding of risk, that, that random, Joe Blow, everyday shop owner, homeowner, whatever, can, can, can interpret at their level. And so they've been spending several years now building um, a, a very high resolution model of the US and taking real property data and merging them with, with current conditions and then with our um, granularized forecast for climate change. So what's this gonna do in, a year, 
two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, right? And as we've talked about, particularly in the context of all these ads we're looking at here in the co context of homes, recall that um, most folks can't afford to just outright pay a gazillion million dollars for a house, right? So most people have to finance that. So you need to get a loan from the bank. And so you need to, so you can get the money, you, you, you acquire the house, and then technically the bank acquires the house, and then you're paying the bank back over time to get the house, right? We call that a mortgage. And so most people either have a 15-year or a 30-year mortgage. And so when we've talked about, if you remember some of our previous discussions about, um, uh, you know, a 1% a one, 1 chance of, of this storm hitting, right? That doesn't sound like all that much, but when you add up, if I'm gonna be paying this back for 30 years, right, then we have essentially a, a one in three chance of that disaster striking before we completely pay off our, our house, for example, right? So these folks understand that, and they're trying to put it into language that, that non-technical experts and, and, and everybody can understand and make it accessible. So they now have a four, uh, uh, so there's a, a new tool they've just launched um, and you have to subscribe to it to do the, the full bells and whistles, which is pretty cool. Very detailed history of the property, very detailed you know, risks and things of that nature. But the basic functions are free to everyone. And so that's what we'll uh, use today. So if I was doing, so I'll show you guys what we're gonna do. So if I was gonna, if, if, if uh, I got my property, right? And so my property, I'm gonna go right here, right? And this guy said, oops. This guy says 4330 Decker uh, Edison Road, okay? So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna say, oops, 4330 Decker Edison Road, and here it pops up in Malibu, right? So I say, okay, this is the property I wanna check out. things for a second and then it's going to give me the the output have a look so we have uh, five different categories of risk here okay so the first is flood factor which is what we've <coughs> most recently been talking about right now that could be coastal flooding or that could be uh, you know inland or riparian flooding um, but but you know flooding and so in some cases if you're a low-lying coastal town, that's mostly going to be things about sea level rise and, and winter storms, for example, right? If you are next to a river, it's mostly going to be more things associated with heavy downpours and sort of the, the bank jumping out of, uh, of the channel. There's fire factor, which is, which is uh, vulnerability to wildfire. Wind factor, which is primarily about extreme wind. So this is, this is, um, uh, uh, mostly associated with hurricane, so hurricane, the tropical storm, uh, wind damage. Um, they don't really factor in Santa Ana winds. So our Santa Ana winds aren't, aren't really, or other catabatic winds like the Diablo winds up north or Santa Barbara sundowner winds, those are not factored in, but they probably eventually may be. But, but for now, this is mostly, we're talking about hurricane storm damage for the most part. Uh, sorry, question? Okay, and then there's air factor, and so air is air quality. So th these, these are um, air hazard days. So when the air quality index gets particularly bad uh, or, or is forecasted to be very bad. And then lastly, we have heat factor. These are uh, excessive heat days. So how many days of the year do we have you know, overly hot uh, periods? And all, all five of these factors are on a one so, so what they're spitting out here is a, is a relative scale, one to 10. So 10 would be, oh my God, it's like, you can't even live there. It's gonna be like happening every year or, or intensely very frequently or something like that. One, which would be the lowest score, would be you don't really need to worry about that. It's, it's, not, it's ex not very likely this will be a problem for you. So as I scroll down here, we see that this particular property, which is on a, on a sort of, we can see it right here. It's on sort of a, you know, a, a canyon hillside kind of thing, right? So we're not, they're not too worried about flooding, right? We're not, we're not the, at a valley floor, we're not on the beach or something like that. Um, and so this, this guy gets a score of one. And if you start to click these things, uh, if, if, there, if it was something other than one, it would give us a little more detail. And then some of these things like this is, is they want you to, you know, you, you can, 
purchase um, you know, a subscription kind of thing if you want to look at this. So a fantastic tool if you are um, a real estate professional, if you're a banker, if you're someone that's thinking about investing in properties and you want to do your own due diligence, you know, all that kind of stuff. But for us, um, you know, it would be great to see this, but, but we're, we're just interested in the high level, right? So again, anybody, you don't have to have any money, anybody can access this level of First Street's reports uh, you know, all over the country, right? Uh, okay, so that's flood. Uh, here's fire. So fire is six, so that, that's pretty high. And if I click this, it's gonna break, now if it's, if it's a minor one, it's just gonna be minor. It means it's like, it's not, there's no real risk, right? But if it has anything that's of an elevated exposure, it's going to tell us what, it's going to give us three, uh, three values. It's going to tell us what the uh, probability or the risk of something is um, right now. And then it's going to forecast that 15 years into the future. So, so 15 years from now, that year, what's the, um, you know, between now and then, what's the probability? And then um, if we go to 30 years, what's the probability of one of these events, uh, in this case, a wildfire striking? Does that make sense? Okay. And then, you know, wind, again, wind is nothing here. So it's going to say, it's not going to give us any of that detail. Um, air, it's going to say moderate. It's going to say they're, they're forecasting only about four days of really poor air quality as measured by the uh, uh, EPA's air quality index. And that's not changing over the, over the you know, life of if you and I were to buy this house or, or over our mortgage lifespan. Um, heat, uh, it's going to go up, but you know, moderately. So it's going to go from about um, 80 days um, where it's over uh, 85 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in a consistent run uh, to 14 days to 20 days, right? Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, I guess that's the last one. Okay, so there we go. So what we're going to do is we are going to... So I've sent you guys all a link. So, so if I just take a quick look at this, just, just so we're all on the same page. Here's like, so in some cases, uh, I, I just, again, I just took pictures of the ads that were in the, in the magazines. So in some cases, it's just like w one page is one property. In other cases, like this one, it's five properties, right? And to be clear, sometimes people say they're leasing a house. This, I, just, I just want you to focus on things where people are, are selling it, so offering to sell. So it's a, a, a millions of dollars number kind of thing, basically. Um, and then I, these are just the magazines I got them from. So these are Conejo Valley, so like Thousand Oaksy, Agura Hillsy area, Malibu, Homes and Land, most of these are it said, it said it was LA, but it mostly seems to be Malibu, but you guys will be able to figure it out. And then also grab some from, uh, from Ojai. There's some from Ojai and there's some from Ogura. Uh, so there we go. So that's the deal. Um, and then what we're gonna do is he here's, our, here's our database. So everybody's been assigned something. And so this would be like find property. So Autumn's going to find property one, then property two, et cetera. Everybody has six to do. So you guys just, just do your six. Or it says seven. How does that work? I thought it was supposed to be six. I gave, I gave Autumn an extra one because she's just that good, I guess, is what I did. Sorry, that was my bad. I don't know why I gave you an extra one. Um, but so I'm going to go in here. So each line, again, is going to be a property. And then um, you're going to say, was it like, that thing on the right hand side, like what magazine did it came from? I don't know if that matters, but I just, when I was organizing, I just said that. And then you'll just type in the address and the city. And then this one's gonna be the property type. So, so most of these are gonna be uh, a home. Most of these are gonna be this first one here, right? But there are other ones, and uh, you can pretty much tell from the photos. So other ones would be I can, like that one I just showed you a second ago, that there's no house there yet. So that price is just for the lot. Right? And so that would be uh, undeveloped or a home site. And then there are, which is crazy to me, but there are ones that are fire destroyed properties. So like, ah, oh, just ready for you to rebuild on it, right? It's kind of like, hmm, wouldn't you make that cheaper? But anyway, so, um, so, so that obviously tells us something about risk. If you were moving to a site where, a, where the structure had already been destroyed by recent wildfires, that should give you some kind of perspective. 
And then uh, there might be a few in here just because there's random listings. There might be a few condos in here and there might be a few mobile homes in here. Uh, and, then, and then just whatever the price they say, right? Just type in, type in the price. And then we have all these things, right? So we have, um, we have, uh, uh, I, I messed up this one here, but so, so this is just gonna be the, the score, that one through 10 score of the flooding. And then whatever the value is for today, uh, uh, 15 years or 30 years. And then the fire today, uh, yeah, it looks like I screwed this one up somehow. This should be a uh, fire risk. This one should be fire risk score. And this is, this should be nothing. Um, and you, you guys get it, right? So we'll fill it in. And then when we have all this, we can actually look to see, hey, um, does the price of these properties correspond to its risk level? Are more expensive properties more risky or more expensive properties less risky? Um, and, we can, and we can get a sense. Again, this is all happy talk, not because we're like, we'll never afford these houses, but because this is the level that we're at. Anybody can now start to access this data, right? Anybody that, that has the wherewithal. So you know, it might be that most of the public is ignorant of this yet, uh, right now, but these tools are available. So this notion of, oh my God, oh woe is us, we don't know what's going on. No, we're having more and more agency. You all are having more and more agency as to where is a safe place for my family to settle, where is a <clears throat> safe place for me to put my business or whatever. And so that, that, that's scary as we start this process, because like, oh my gosh, this doesn't seem safe now or something. But with this knowledge, we're gonna get safer, right? We're gonna be able to make more informed decisions and be better um, uh, and avoid the problems in the first place as opposed to just having the disaster come and hit us after the fact and people say, oh my God, I had no idea that whatever, flooding was a possible problem or, or something.